Hello athletes and fitness enthusiasts, Jürgen Swinkels here. Today I'm going to compare sports drinks and energy drinks. Sports drinks and energy drinks are commonly available in the marketplace. They are two very different beverages. Sports drinks are marketed as beverages that replenish electrolytes, lost during exercise, supply carbohydrates, prevent dehydration and sustain endurance capacity. Energy drinks, on the other hand, are advertised to increase energy and or alertness. In this video, I will focus on explaining the differences between these two drinks and clarify why it's important to know the benefits and downsides of each product. So, let's get after it. Let's start with some definitions. An energy drink is a type of drink containing a stimulant compound, usually caffeine, which is promoted as providing mental and physical stimulation. Although this stimulus is marketed as energy, it is very different from food energy. Energy drinks may or may not be carbonated and may also contain sugar or sweeteners, herbal extract, taurine and amino acid. They may be considered a subset of the larger group of energy products, which include energy bars and energy gels, but is very distinct from sports drinks, which are advertised to enhance sports performance. The use of high caffeine energy drinks before and during exercise has become increasingly popular in particular because of the marketing of the energy drink companies focusing on extreme sports. However, energy drinks don't always mix well with exercise. While the caffeine and taurine that they deliver might improve performance in endurance exercise, these drinks can't replace sports drinks that provide caloric energy and electrolytes. Actually, energy drinks can lead to dehydration if you don't ensure you're getting enough fluids. Traditional sports drink usually include water, sodium, sugar and sometimes potassium in proportions that help the body absorb fluids and salt loss during sweating. The sugars not only help provide fuel for muscles that need sugars to keep performing well during long runs or bike rides, but also help the body take in the water. The electrolytes help protect the body from hyponatremia, also known as water intoxication which can happen if you drink a large amount of water without any salts. Energy drinks, on the other hand, are formulated to deliver caffeine and other stimulants, such as guarana or ginseng, to give a rush of energy. They may also contain taurine, an amino acid that may boost performance during exercise by helping muscular contraction and the removal of waste products but energy drinks are not designed to replace lost fluids during exercise. Some products come in small cans that deliver a large amount of caffeine in a small amount of fluid. Many are carbonated, which can lead exercisers to experience burping, nausea and a bloated feeling. Energy drinks are often handed out at extreme sports events by marketeers, which might lead people to think that it is a sports drink. People tend to think that if you hand out something during a competition, it will be good for them. But many energy drinks come in small cans that pack as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, 80 milligrams, and more than a can of cola, 40 milligrams. Caffeine is a mild diuretic that can cause a frequent urge to urinate in the short term, especially if you're not a regular caffeine drinker. People may ingest more caffeine than they realize when drinking energy drinks. A general consensus is that 250 mg per day of caffeine should be the limit. And according to the US Food and Drug Administration, drinking more than 400 mg a day, two or three cups of coffee and an energy drink can lead to jitters, nausea and even heart palpitations. The average amount of caffeine per espresso is roughly 50 mg of caffeine per single shot. That means it's about 100 mg per double shot and 150 mg for three shots. 
For easy remembering, I'm going to say that a regular sized coffee usually has roughly 100 mg of caffeine and a large coffee has 150 mg of caffeine. The WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, has included caffeine in their monitoring program since 2009, which means that it is not considered a prohibited substance. And there are no limits to its usage. The International Society of Sports Nutrition recommends 3 to 9 mg of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. The US Food and Drug Administration reports toxic effects at 1200 mg. If athletes rely on energy drinks only, they may drink two or three small cans, still thinking they haven't had enough in terms of fluids, which may very well be true. However, if they drink larger cans, it will contain double the amount of caffeine. If you have already had two cups of coffee in the morning, adding a can of energy drink will put you over the amount of 250 mg a day of caffeine that most dietitians think is a reasonable limit. Studies show that having the right amount of caffeine on board may improve performance for endurance exercise, such as running and for muscle strength and endurance. According to a review of 35, uh, 34 studies actually, it appears caffeine plays a role in improving performance, but it must be taken in moderate doses, about five to six milligram per kilogram of body weight. As I said, caffeine is a mild diuretic, which can stimulate an urge to urinate. Involuntary stimulation to urinate removes water from the body, especially if you are not accustomed to caffeine. However, this doesn't necessarily affect overall hydration, but having the urge to urinate is for many athletes an undesirable effect. Caffeine can also have a laxative effect. This can lead to needing a restroom more often or with more urgency. I think it's needless to say that caffeine may therefore enhance runner's diarrhea, runner's colitis or runner's trots. Long distance runners, those who run 4.5 km or 3 miles or more at a given time, are the most likely to experience this effect. There is no magic formula for determining how much water you actually need and how much sports drink you need to prevent dehydration while exercising. Everyone reacts a little differently. In line with the American College of Sports Medicine, the ACSM, the recommendation is to prehydrate, meaning being sure you are adequately hydrated before you even start exercising, and then drink during and after exercise to replace water lost during sweating. The conclusion, water is generally considered a good form of hydration. However, for most athletes, it is not sufficient. For endurance exercise, sports drink will be more effective at getting your body to absorb fluid quickly and replenish lost electrolytes. Unlike sports drink, energy drinks are not considered a proper source of hydration, especially in regards to endurance activities when hydration and electrolyte replenishment are paramount. I would like to finish off with a few words of caution. Both sports drinks and energy drinks pose potential health risk for children and may contribute to obesity. Actually, sports drinks are in general unnecessary for children engaged in routine or play-based physical activity. Of course, sports drinks should be used during exercise of vigorous intensity for more than one hour, especially in hot weather and or if sweating heavily. Energy drinks usually contain significantly more sugar than sports drinks, as well as substantial caffeine levels, which is not recommended for children. Water that is calorie free and accessible with no cost to most people is the beverage of choice taken with and between meals. Perhaps of greater importance in athletes of any age, but especially youth, is to encourage a balanced diet snacks as needed and adequate water that will best enhance physical and mental performance. 
So, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We are dropping videos like this on YouTube on a regular basis. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments box below with hashtag School of Sport Nutrition and I'll do my best to get in there and get those questions answered right away.